All right, guys. Welcome to another episode of WordPress Roundtable. We are here today, uh, Nate and Kellen and myself. We're short uh, Jason and Brian for the time being, but they'll be back with us next week. And we have a very special guest with us today, um, happiness engineer and automatician uh, and also webmaster for and writer for uh, your website engineer.com, uh, Dustin Hartzler. So thanks for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm sure this is going to be a blast. Yeah, yeah, it will be. So um, we're going to start uh, just rolling through some questions. We're going to cover, cover a few different topics. Um, and uh, we've only got uh, one hour to cover all of them. So I hope you're ready. I'm, I'm ready. Just get started and ask the first question. You can take it wherever you want to go, Dustin. Um, so um, I want to know, uh, what did you do before you got into working with websites and stuff? Where were you? I uh, have a degree in electrical engineering, so I was in engineering. That was kind of my, my background, and I started right after college. I graduated. I was doing a little bit of web stuff, but it was all like static HTML stuff uh, in college, but I graduated with a degree in electrical engineering, and it turns out like I got a job at Whirlpool Corporation, which makes washers, dryers, dishwashers, refrigerators, all those big things, and I worked at a dryer manufacturer and a dryer plant. I worked there for three and a half years. I did a lot of odds and ends for a while, but then I became like the electronics test engineer, and I helped to develop test routines to make sure that dryers were assembled properly as they were going down an assembly line. So it was, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the work, but I didn't enjoy the corporate environment. So that was kind of the big turnoff for me. So I, oh, let's go to, let's have seven hours of meetings and do eight hours worth of work all in the same day. <laughs> like, those things didn't overlap, and it was like, even though it was back, let's see, it was 2007 when I started, it still wasn't like we all had laptops and we just took laptops to meetings. It was like, oh, you go to a meeting and you just kind of sit there and you listen and you try to participate. And you really couldn't do anything at all during those meetings. And so, like, I just kind of got frustrated the more I heard about just websites in general. And I'm like, I can start my own business doing this. And I was excited, but I could never really justify the, hey, I'm going to stop this $60,000 a year job so I can start making zero dollars a year. And my wife and I have a lot, had a lot of student loans, and she was still in college, um, finishing up a pharmacy degree and whatnot. So I was like, this will never be quite the right time. And it turned out in 2010, she actually got a pharmacy um, faculty position at a local university here to Dayton, Ohio. And we moved, and I'm like, I'm not driving two hours to and from work each way. And so I'm, like, I'm going to start my own thing. If it works, it works. If not, I'm just going to find another job in the area. Like, there's no reason for me to commute that far um, for a job. So that's kind of my little bit of background when it came to getting started kind of my, with my own business. But I've been dabbling in websites since somebody showed me how to use front page in Ooh. 2003. I was, like, in love with front page, and I designed, like, my own personal website was in front page, and all I really did was I listed, like, my uh, intramural championships, um, I, I auto played music when it loaded. Like we are the champions. Like I did all the absolute worst things you could ever do when building a website. But um, that's kind of where I got my start when it comes to WordPress. Yeah, those were the glory days for sure. Those were the glory. And I believe too, it was uh, my website was three iframes. So I had like an iframe across <laughs> the top, and then my my menus down the side were iframes, and the body was iframes as well. So Bless. yeah, it was it was pretty stellar. <laughs> Who taught you this? Um, a friend of mine, or he was actually, like, I was in residence life, and the head resident of the building was like, oh, well, let me show you what I know how to do. And I guess we actually started a little bit with front page and some with, like, it, what was there? It was Adobe Prod. It was not Adobe Dreamweaver, but there was another Adobe something that you could use to... Um, it was like one of the first web creators and we just kind of went and tinkered around and I always used like the visual editor and had no idea about code. I probably tinkered around with websites for a few years before I even understood like what code was and how to make a link and how to do this other than just using you know the visual editors. So I never really, nobody really taught me, they just kind of showed me some things and I just started tweaking and experimenting. So, th so you're obviously, you're website engineer. Tell us more of like your elevator pitch for that, since that's what you're doing now. Sure, yeah. Um, so in addition to, uh, I guess when I started my web development company, I had no idea really how to get clients um, besides like going and knocking on, like looking up like, oh, let's look at this plumber's website. It's horrible. Let's go talk to him. <laughs> I didn't really want that as my strategy to to go and find clients. And so what I ended up doing was I listened to, when I was commuting, 
when I was working at Whirlpool, I had an hour commute each way to and from work, which was it was a long way, but I listened to podcasts. I got hooked on podcasts, and so I was listening to all kinds of like Apple News, and I never really listened to like WordPress or website type stuff, but it was all about podcasting. It was all about uh, uh, motivational type things, and I was just like so pumped, like I want to create something like this. And so when I got started, I was like, this will be kind of my way to get back into the website or back into the podcasting space or into the podcasting space, and it can help drive my business. And so, like, I have a background also when I was in college. I did, uh, I did some radio, so I worked at the radio station. I was a sports broadcaster, so I was familiar with the equipment and how to get behind the mic and stuff like that. And so I just started kind of on a whim. If you listen to the first, like, ten episodes, like, one, I had no clue what I was doing about podcasts. And two, I was like, wow, I knew so little about websites. It was ridiculous. Like, it was just crazy, like, some of the things that I talked about. But my whole goal, my whole vision was just to give away free information. Like I would just try to answer as many questions as I can. Just My goal is just to help the business owners, those people that want to know how to use their website better. They don't want to pay somebody for these little tweaks or maybe they're the entrepreneur that, you know, doesn't have the funds to hire somebody but they're like a real tinkerer and they love to do this kind of stuff at night so that's kind of my ultimate goal is just to teach people how to go through and uh, use WordPress to the best of their ability level so it's really difficult with my audience like I have a lot of people who are like brand new like hey I just installed WordPress for the first time help but then I also have like people who are hey I develop websites for people like I'm cl I'm charging clients money for and so it's like for these projects and it's like so how do I kind of balance it so I kind of it's it's really kind of a challenge but I think I do a good job of kind of separating some of the beginner type stuff like here's some blogging things to do here's it all ties back to WordPress in some way sometimes it's newsletter type stuff how to like the nuts and bolts and how to do things and it's really kind of difficult too on an audio level just because um, it's hard to say, oh, well, you write this code, and here's a semicolon here, and use this bracket. So I try to make it really high-level type stuff, and then if there's any code, like, hey, go back to the, my website, and you can copy and paste the code and use it, you know, wherever you need to. So that's kind of what yourwebsiteengineer.com is all about. Well, that's awesome. I mean, you're, you're giving some great information out there, but some of the audience, the viewers, uh, they don't know that you're also an automatician. Uh, so I'm not sure how you're able to do both of these things and still live. Um, so tell us, what is it like to be an automatician or what it is exactly that you sure. do there? Sure. So an automatician is somebody that works at Automatic. And Automatic is the company that's kind of behind, we're behind WordPress.com is our flagship platform. And WordPress.com is just WordPress software running on our server. So we give it the the easiest way to get set up using WordPress and you can get up and running within a few clicks it's all completely free we have some upgrades and whatnot that you can use to you know make your site better or whatnot but the main thing is we help people with their blogs and their websites and things along those lines and so we've got a lot of other products but Automatic is the company it's run by Matt Mullenweg the the co-founder of WordPress and so it's like we all work from home we all have our own responsibilities and we can pretty much work whenever we want to so once I hang up this phone like or the the hangout here. If I wanted to, I could start working, even though it's eight o'clock at night here, or I could start working at three o'clock in the morning when I'm up. Like I have a brand new baby. I mean, she's less than three months old, and so like I've been up sometimes at night. And it's like, oh, I could answer some tickets a while. I might just work while I'm up, and, and that is not my child that you hear in the background. That's <laughs> that, that's that's mine. <laughs> that's my child. <laughs> So, so we have it's. I just looked at the numbers, and we're up to 248 employees where we work all over the world, and we're we we call it uh, location independent. So we're a distributed company, and we can work from wherever we want. So um, it's it's absolutely the best job. I never thought I would actually just have another job once I started my own thing because I'm like I don't really want to work for anybody. But uh, this is almost like the best of both worlds. Like I have a I have an employer. But it's also like I'm an entrepreneur and I get to do all of the things that um, I did when I had my own business. That's so cool, man. I'll, I'll jump in for a sec, Dustin. I was, um, I was kind of wondering, you know, I, fo I follow your, uh, your podcast and I was wondering if, you know, when you made that um, announcement that you were, had become, you know, accepted the, that position and become an automatician, I didn't know if one was tied to the other. You know, if automatic was... Uh, interested in in um, the podcasting and that you know brand that you had built that business and kind of bought uh, bought it as well as you know yourself so to speak 
Um, but it sounds like they're they're completely separate based on what you just said, right? Yep, they are still That's completely cool. separate. Yeah, um, that was one. Of, that was actually a very big struggle for me because I'm like, I love what I'm doing. I love growing my own personal brand. I love going to conferences as Dustin from your website, engineer.com, and yeah, you know, yeah. growing that following and all those different things. But on the other hand, it's like I work for this company. I can work with the smartest people when it comes to WordPress. That's actually inside in the you know, trenches, you know, with WordPress code every day. But then it's like that's another side of things. So I actually sought out the job. Like I went and I applied, and the podcast I I know that it helped me get in. It didn't help me actually get the job. Like once I got that first interview, then I had to prove myself that way. But at least me giving back to the community. I had at that time I think 160 episodes, so 160 weeks in a row I had released wow. a podcast episode. So um, that was kind of my hey, look what he's doing for the community. He's giving away this information, and it didn't. It it really helped too when I was able to say hey, I think I can do a good job. But here's all of these five star reviews in iTunes. Go ahead and check those out, and let me know like if you think that I you know if I'm a good fit um, to to take a really confusing topic like WordPress and make it easy for people to understand. So. So it, they're completely separate, and I actually like when I interviewed with Matt. Everybody interviews with Matt Mullenweg as part of the onboarding process. Like that's the final step. If you get to him and you get through him, you, you know you're in. And it was like the most stressful like, interview like, ever. Like, like ready for like what am I gonna say? Like I've never really you know I still haven't met him in person, but I never brought that up. Like the 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 conflict of interest policy is like says that I can never make money charging for WordPress services since I'm an automatician because it could be unfair because I could say oh well, I work for automatic I charge five hundred dollars an hour so pay me so let's <laughs> just a conflict so I, I which is perfect for my podcast my brand like giving away free ebooks like everything that I do now I don't have to worry about getting paid and like now it's just a matter of how much time do I actually have to create this awesome stuff so and that's been a little bit of a challenge lately just because it's been hard with a new baby but it's like every time that I get in front of my computer and I'm doing something that's for the podcast or for a video that I'm creating like I'm just so pumped and energized. It's just it's awesome. So they're completely separate. That's so cool. That's so cool. I was gonna say uh, I, I I want to um, coin a a new nickname for Matt Mullenweg. It's it's Bowser because he's the final boss that you have to see <laughs> before you get in. Right? Exactly. Final boss equals Bowser. All right. Right. You can tell him. You can tell him. I said. Okay. Uh, when I meet him someday. Next question. <laughs> He'd be like, "Who? Never heard of that." Um, <laughs> Hey, one more question for you. I a few months back, I had read um, the Year Without Pants. Right, mm -hmm. Scott Scott Birkin, uh, yep. who was a former Microsoft employee who had worked for Automatic, um, with the understanding, uh, right, with uh, Matt Mullenweg, Mullenweg. He he said, "Yes, I'll be on your team, on your um, a part of your company, and lead you know um, one of your teams and uh, be part of it if I can." At the end of of that, I can write an experience about working for that distributed company and mm -hmm. the culture. Open source meets, you know, this huge, um, huge company in the tech space and what that dynamic was like and stuff like that. So I really enjoyed it. I got, I got a lot out of that. Um, I was wondering offhand, so which in the book he kind of goes through the the transition from no teams where everybody's working not quite autonomously, but uh, just playing to their strengths and giving up their the work in more of an I don't know, free for all kind of manner. They go to that to the team organization. So mm -hmm. Like which team? Which team would you be? Are you a part of? And uh, what do your teammates do? Yep. Ties in? So I'm on the. So our team is broken down. It's called um, Core Happy. We're the happiness engineers, and our goal is to just make our users happy. And then that team is right now. We're sitting about 40 employees. But then we're broken down into, I think, six smaller sub-teams from that. So we have people that answer only questions about Jetpack. So they are like the Jetpack ex experts. So if somebody's having a connection problem or they need their, their um, subscribers transferred from one site to another, like all of those things that have to do with Jetpack, that's one team. There's another team that does like all of like the terms of service stuff, like people that are abusing WordPress and that are, you know, that are saying that other people are abusing it or they have spam on their sites. You know, they're trying to make WordPress.com a clean place for websites. We've got a live chat team, which is a team that, you know, they we're working on like expanding our live chat capabilities for WordPress.com premium users or people who have paid something um, for for WordPress. So that's another team that they focus day in and day out of just answering people's questions in that manner. Um, 
I'm trying to think. Oh, there's a team that's the forums, and the forums they you know what they hang out in the public forums. They make sure that the volunteers are at least answering the questions somewhat knowledgeable. They um, will go in and do anything that the volunteers can't. Like there's some personal or there's some things that we have to do as automaticians to go in and you know make things. Um, fix them or do whatever you know so we do those and they make sure that nobody goes unanswered which is a kind of a benefit as well like it's it's a painful experience if you leave a forum post and nobody responds not even an employee yeah. so we've got another you know we've got another team that does that and then my team I guess there might be only five my team focuses on um, a paid user, so somebody has that's either paid for a domain upgrade or a premium subscription or you know any kind of they've just actually paid us money. Um, then we work on helping them, you know, fix custom CSS issues. Maybe they are, you know, they're trying to do something, they just don't know how to, you know, set something up. Maybe their theme is kind of you know, kind of weird. How do you set up the theme to look like the um, like the demo theme? So we do a lot of like troubleshooting. We find a lot of problems. Um, as a happiness engineer, like we can answer tickets all day long, but a lot of the tickets will turn into, hey, there's an actual problem here. We've got to duplicate it. So then we have our own WordPress.com test accounts. We'll test it. We'll see. You know, is it a, is it a theme related issue? Because the cool thing is with WordPress.com is everybody's running the exact same software. There is no extra plugins that people are using that could break things. Things. There's no extra premium themes. There's like everything is like this um, this closed environment. So the only real issue could be is a theme because there's like 300 and some themes that people can use. So we'll go in and we'll install the theme. Um, if they're having a problem with billing, like we can um, we can simulate that within our own test sites to see is there a problem. You know, can we duplicate the issues? And if there are problems, then we go in and we write a full track report. And we go into ex extreme detail. Like here's the problem. Here's how we think you can solve it. If you're if you're really geeky like me, sometimes I'll actually dig into the code and I'll say, hey, on line 362, let's go ahead and change this line. This is what's giving, causing us the problems and you can either write pseudocode or you can actually say hey this is the code I think that um, that will work as as happiness engineers we don't get any access to actual code like I mean we can see all the code obviously because it's all open source and it's there but we can't commit any code and so we can suggest as much as we want and then sometimes the developers are super nice when they do the the commit they'll say like props at Dustin Hartzler for finding the bug and fixing. So that's, that's like cool. the only way I can get my name kind of slipped in there. But it's all about, you know, it's not about like, hey, how many bugs has Dustin fixed? No, it's, it's all about finding them and, you know, getting somebody on the team that can do it. Let's, let's get it fixed to make it the best experience for all users. That's very cool, yeah. I was thinking, too, that um, as you said, your, you know, um, your website engineer, that whole business uh, was probably a huge springboard, right, to, uh, to getting a, landing the job with Automatic. And that doesn't surprise me. A lot of the, you know, job postings I've seen in passing are like they focus on yes, you must you know have a familiarity familiarity with the WordPress way and all these um, you know the languages involved and stuff like that. But all it with it seems like without fail is must be active in the community, mm -hmm. right? Giving giving back and providing something, plugins and themes, and working in the forums or contributing to core that kind of stuff. So you yeah. definitely had that going for you. That even helps me like figure out because there's like 12 positions always open at automatic like apply to be a code wrangler or a, a theme shaper or, you know whatever the crazy titles are that we have these days but like the <laughs> happiness engineer one was the one that was like hey you know what like this is what I enjoy the most anyways because with a podcast like I have people that write in and ask questions all the time like hey I can't log into my dashboard it's completely white like what's the problem like hey I might be able to right. you know then I can at least I love just answering the questions and helping people out you know okay it's a simple problem we can get this fixed we can get your site restored no problem and so I get to do this every day without ever having to figure out some sort of compensation plan to charge like I couldn't even though I loved answering questions all day long like you can't charge like to answer somebody's question like oh you owe me five dollars because you because I just gave you this answer that saved you a hundred dollars <laughs> of a developer time like right, yeah. it's, it's like the worst business model ever but that was my favorite thing that that I got to do as part of my own company so uh, it just kind of worked out that now I get to do that all day and whether I answer ten tickets or four thousand tickets in a day um, I get paid exactly the same which is awesome that's very cool <laughs> yeah that is pretty cool Dustin and, and so that kind of um, really so one of the next things I wanted to ask a little bit about is um, the the team you're on you mentioned all the different teams at automatic you're on the happiness team you didn't mention team social which is what the book is about which I read too I just finished that which is um, uh, it was an interesting book it's cool to get that kind of an insight from like within a, within this company you know that we right about. Um, so uh, uh, 
do you envision yourself always working on the happiness team? Or are there other teams that you know you could see yourself working in? Yeah, so, um, and it's kind of a, in, it's been an internal discussion before, like, can a happiness engineer move up, quote unquote, like, we're in, can we move up to another position? And, um, and it, Matt's actually commented on it, and it's all about, like, if you're the best qualified person for the job, like, you can apply for jobs, you know, that are different from what you have. If you meet the criteria, they go through the same interview process, you still have the same trial projects and things like that. If it works, like, you can move. There's been people that's moved from happiness to now they're code wranglers and they work on code somewhere within WordPress.com. Like, um, one of the other positions that's kind of within the happiness team is they're called happiness gardeners. And again, I'm, like I said earlier, we have the most ridiculous... Um, um, titles and uh, these gardeners are actually the ones that make tools for the happiness engineers so our internal tools where we answer tickets and whatnot it's all custom made it's all handcrafted using WordPress and um, we use it and then if we ever have features or requests or things that we want to update or change then that's when we say hey can you do this can you do this I'd love to see this feature and then they go ahead and just build that and so I think that would be a really neat opportunity someday to maybe move into that role like I'm not the best um, developer in the world like I can take code and I can modify it and I can make it do what I want it to do but I am very bad when it comes to coding and starting out with a blank sheet of paper if you will or a blank code editor and just say go like build something like like ah, that's not my best thing so one of the really cool parts about an auto, being an automatic and in one of the company perks is as a happiness engineer we get to spend 20 percent of our time learning different skills or working on a project outside of answering tickets and so like I can go in and I can go to code school or code academy or you know any of the big places and we've got memberships you know corporate memberships for those and I can just go in and I can spend one day per week if I want to learning how to write SAS or PHP or whatever that code is and so I'm working on some of those to make myself a better developer and so I, I can write code better so then someday like I can say like I think right now it's kind of neat when um, on a previous project I was like oh here's the code and here's the how to change it so I was like telling other people like hey I know what I'm doing but I just don't have the access I'm just not the best programmer yet so I want to make sure that I know what I'm doing when it comes to programming and become a little better of a programmer and then I might reach out and say hey I'd like to give this a try or I want to do a rotation in this area this group for a little while to see if it would be a good fit for me before I would apply for a job internally within automatic that's pretty interesting. I did notice um, as I was reading your uh, your ebook earlier today, flipping through that uh, 50, uh, 50 plugins um, ebook on my iPad earlier today, uh, that I noticed a plugin that uh, you authored yourself. Yes. Uh, a podcasting plugin that's on .org available. Yes, it is. Um, this was basically, and it, it seems like every plugin author that I've ever interviewed and talked to on my show always is like, yeah, I just created this plugin because I needed it for myself. And so I'm like, hey, that's the reason that I created my plugin. So <laughs> I created one. It's called As Heard On. And it is a basically, it's a testimonial plugin. And it basically shows the little album art that you see in iTunes for each podcast that you listen to. And I basically, basically all I wanted to do is I wanted to shout from the rooftops like, hey, if you like me, go check me out over here and over here. And I'm on this podcast podcast and I'm on this show and so that's what I ended up doing it's called as heard on and I just created I basically I forked I didn't even start with real code how's that I didn't even start with a blank sheet of paper I started with somebody else's testimonial plugin I forked it and then I just re pretty much rewrote the whole thing um, but I got that I and I wrote it and then when I actually went to WordCamp Grand Rapids um, I actually was there and there was another guy that I was talking to, another speaker, and he's like, yeah, I have a plugin that I've written. I want to release it on the repo. And I was like, so do I. Like, let's let's find somebody that can help us. And of course, Pippin Williamson was there and he's one of the plugin reviewers. And we asked him what the process was and all those different things. And he's like, yeah, basically we just look at the code and we see if there's any security vulnerabilities. And then if there are, we tell you to fix them. And then we go like we you don't have to have the most perfect code because they want people to get into the repository they don't want like even first time plugin developers like me like getting denied because they don't have the perfect hand crafted code that's you know 12 lines long you know instead of 400 lines like mine might be and so it was actually really cool pippin actually he's like well just open up your text editor he's like i'll read your code right now and i was like holy smokes and so he like scrolled through my code and he's like i would change this and this and then go ahead and submit it and then let me know when it's submitted and uh, both both me and the other guy, we submitted our code, and we kind of shouted across. This was actually on Developer Day at WordCamp Grand Rapids. I'm like, Pippin, hey, I've uploaded it, and it was in. It was like, I don't know, I was 106 in line or something like that. It's like 106 or before you to be reviewed. And then he went in like. 
five minutes later, he's like, yep, it's done. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so then I had to go and try to figure out, okay, now you have to connect to the SVN and you have to upload it. And it's, it's kind of like, it's a whole other learning process. So it took me months to learn how to write a plugin and to get it to work exactly the way I wanted. And then it was another like two or three weeks before I figured out how to actually get it on the repo. And then... Um, and then it's like, oh, now I have my own plugin out there. And so that's another thing that I was able to kind of highlight on my resume. It's like, oh, you know, when I'm applying for Automatic, I have this plugin on the repository. I've answered, you know, I hang out in the forum some. I ha have my own podcast. I have my own website development business. You know, I, I do speak at word camps. You know, I've spoke at five or six different word camps. So um, those were all kind of things that were going for me. But, yeah, uh, it's way easier than I kind of made it sound like it's not that hard to get a plug in out there and uh, but it's really been it was awesome experience to, to to go through all those steps and all those motions to get there and then say hey I do have a plug in that's out there on the repo it's pretty cool that's working awesome man. awesome so <laughs> yeah definitely publishing plugins is like so much fun and uh, quite an experience it's something I love to do um, and uh, and then dealing with the SVN stuff and getting it on the on the repository. There's there's a serious learning curve there, but um, it's cool. That must have been a cool experience to work directly with Hitfit and, and get yours on on the web. I know how exciting it is to publish your first one. Right, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, and I kept refreshing, it. like, did did it work? Refresh, refresh, refresh. You know, like, yes, <laughs> it's there, it's there. <laughs> Pretty awesome. I love, that. I love that. I still to this day love it. Every time I push out a new plugin, I get that exciting. Right. Uh, so um, we've got all kinds of other things we want to ask a little bit about. Um, I'm really curious. Uh, you you do so so many different things. I think um, maybe uh, maybe maybe walk us through like a typical day for Dustin Hartzler. Yeah, so um, a typical day in this time of my life with a baby um, is a little bit different than it was before because I had a like be, okay I had a baby that Just was a little born, bit yeah a little she bit. was born on May or March twelfth so almost three months ago but if I go back I'll say before her birth and then now like kind of the difference but before you know I was getting up and I was working early. Um, usually before seven o'clock, I was working on trying to do some yourwebsiteengineer.com stuff. You know, whether that would be like outlining a show for the next week, or just you know updating my website, or updating the plugins, and backing things up, and tweaking and playing, and you know trying to make. Um, my site better like so I had a few hours in the morning that I was always working on that and then I would dive into maybe nine o'clock ish eight to nine ish um, automatic has some really flexible work hours let's say um, so like I alluded earlier like you can work whenever you want and so like a lot of times especially when I was r first starting out like a lot of people didn't start till nine o'clock or ten o'clock and so it was like I don't really, I if I had questions there was nobody to really ask so I'm like why well, get in that early so um, and then you know I would do tickets and work on projects and do different things from like nine to four or five ish till my wife came home and then I would enjoy the evenings and usually never get back on the computer at night except for maybe some tinkering that I want to do with my own personal sites. Um, now my schedule is a little bit different because of my daughter but she actually goes down for like a two to three hour nap first thing in the morning so like 7.30 ish she, she'll go back to sleep till about 10.30 and um, She'll sleep, and then that's when I really focus in on work, so I can have about a three-hour solid time frame of work. And then it's then the rest of the day is like bouncing between naps. I do a little work here, do a little work there whenever she's napping, and when I have the opportunity. So I work from home. She stays at home with me, and we do have somebody that comes to the house three days a week and just gives me five hours of time um, that. I can just completely leave her with um, the babysitter and so that I can really focus on work for three hours or for five hours, three days a week, which is really nice. But it's super nice that I don't have to like really get dressed and go places and to drop her off and go pick her up. Like I'm always here and if she needs anything, like I can just walk upstairs. It's not a big deal. So that's a little bit in, in my life. Most of the time we do, um, I guess a lot of the communication within Automatic is all via text. So we do a lot of text-based um, chats. So we have some private chat rooms either in Skype or we're actually trying a new thing out called Slack. It's a new like team communication tool that's out there. So we've been playing with Slack lately and we've got these private channels and we talk to each other via that or hey I have a question about this ticket can you answer this and it's all via text so we can get to it when we get to it. That's the big thing like every conversation that we have that's via text is archived in some way where you can go back and read. So like our big team chat that we have every Thursday if I'm not there like I can go on Friday morning I can go and I can scroll back to the beginning I can read the entire conversation I can see exactly what I missed I can see where all the notes are and things like that 
Um, and then one day a week we do a small group chat. So my team is uh, 11 people, uh, and we try to get all together on a, on the phone or via one of these hangouts, and we just talk and we just we don't really talk a lot of shop, if you will. It's more like getting to know each other because we work with each other every day. Like it's kind of nice to know, like oh hey, you know so and so lives here and they have how many kids and you know this is their favorite activity. So we just talk about random stuff like that. About a half hour a week that we get to see each other. So that's kind of um, a typical day, if you will. But every day is always so different, so I wouldn't say that there's really a typical day. Um, last week, we or two weeks ago, we started doing support via the mobile apps. And so like I spent the entire day answering people's questions via a mobile app. And 65% of those questions were, help, I can't log in. And I'm like, what's the problem? Like, why are, is our app broken or is it user problem? Like, what was causing that many people? Like, it was just that there were so many people. And it just turned out that if you were trying to log into the WordPress app, trying to log into a self-hosted site, the very first thing that you're prompted for is a WordPress.com login. And you have to mm -hmm. click a little yeah. button, a little link all the way at the bottom that says add self-hosted site. So I spent like three hours that day like walking through the process, like trying different logins because I've got WordPress.com sites, I've got WordPress.org sites, I've got Jetpack WordPress.org sites. Like I've got all the different variations. And so I was just trying to log into all those. I was taking screenshots of where we can improve. And uh, so I spent like the entire day doing that. And I looked at my stats at the end of the day like, oh, I answered like six tickets all day long. But I was working all day and it really made a better user experience. Um, in the long run for the rest of you know the people who are using our mobile app. So um, so we get some flexibility there and we get to work on cool projects that we're interested in. I only got to do the mobile stuff because I'm like, hey, I want to try something new. I want to work on mobile for a few days. And so kind of flip-flop that way too. Nice. Hey, cool. you had mentioned Pippin before and he's pretty known within the WordPress inner community. Who are some people that uh, beyond Pippin that actually inspire you? Wow, that's a that's a good question. Um, I think there's a there's a uh, I'm I'm just trying to think here. Uh, one one guy that really inspired me by his podcast, and this is really about the only other WordPress podcast that I listen to, is the one by Matt Medeiros, the Matt Report, and he talks to other WordPress business owners. And so Ooh. that one was awesome for me because I was listening to him. He was telling like he was. Answer, asking people, you know, how did you grow your company from, you know, making those $500 websites to making the $5,000 websites? And so he really inspired me to, like, all his interviews just kind of motivated me, like, oh, wow, it can be done, it can be done. And, again, I never really planned on applying it automatic until I heard one of his interviews when he was interviewing an automatician, and I was like, oh, I should check that out. And, you know, so that's kind of one of the reasons that um, that I went that route. But So he's been a big inspiration to me. Pippin, I love just kind of seeing what he's doing, and, and he inspires me to just, like, try writing code, write better code, like, do different things. And I guess another guy um, that's up in the WordPress or the Grand Rapids area, um, Brian Richards, right? Is that his name? Risen yeah. at Risen? Um, That's right. Yeah, yeah. I'm always like, I'm always just fascinated by what he's doing and what things he's creating online. So um, those are a couple guys. There's so many others that I meet at WordCamps. So I'm like, oh, you know, I'm excited to talk to you, or I'm excited to talk to you. You know, like Saeed Balki. Like he, I've met him like a half a dozen times, and you know, he's always like. Oh, you, you know, he's always got different projects up his, you know, sleeve, and he's like, I'm going to launch this, I'm going to do this, and I, I've had 10 million views on this, and, you know, I'm making $7 million, you know, I, I don't know if that's the case. <laughs> you know, like, it's, in, it's inspiring to see, like, people, I guess, for me, it's inspiring to see people who are younger than me, which I'm not that old, you know, I'm only 30, but people that are younger than me that are just killing it in the WordPress community. It's like, wow, they're doing a great job. But there's, there's a lot of people out there, but those are some things, those are a few guys that come up off the top of my head. Nice. Now, you said there are some people that were younger than you. What about people who are just getting into WordPress? You know, they, they see it, they see the community. You know, what would you say to them to get them to be more involved? How, how could they get more involved in your eyes? Sure, yeah, there's, there's so many ways to get involved with the WordPress community. I mean, the easiest way is getting involved by just going, seeing if there's any local meetups, local gatherings that are in the area. Yeah, hands <laughs> up to the, uh, the, Dayton, the Dayton group here in, in Ohio. So um, even, even like local WordCamps, like I think WordCamps are the absolute best way to yeah. get involved. Because those things can inspire you. Whether you go and you've never even installed WordPress before, like you can learn so much about you know, WordPress, you can learn about the community, you can learn about so many different things. And it doesn't matter if you've just started or you've been developing for, you know, decades, that 
you can learn something at those events or you can you can teach somebody else at those events so even if you're brand new and you've at least installed WordPress I bet you there's one person at a WordCamp or a meetup group sometime that has never even installed WordPress and you can help them through that so um, not necessarily like you're gonna be teaching them how to build a you know custom pu functionality plugin or how to what custom post types are and stuff like that <laughs> that's one of the, the easiest ways to get in get in and get involved um, Another another way is even just hanging out on the forums. Like I think that's a great way to get involved. Even if you're not answering questions, but if you're just hanging out there and seeing what other people are asking and what the answers are and how they're answering, I think that's a great way to learn. Like that's how I learned pretty much everything when it came when I first got started. It's like how do you do this? Like you just you type it in, you Google, and then you're like, oh, you come to the WordPress.org for, forums and you're you see the answers, you see the questions, and I think that's another great way to to get involved. Awesome. Now, what, what are some of your favorite parts of the WordPress community? I know you mentioned the meetups, the forums, uh, the WordCamps, but what are your top five parts of the WordPress community? Oh, man. Um, probably one of the biggest ones is everybody is so generous. Like, I haven't met a single WordPress person that's like, I know how to do that, but I'm not telling. Like, <laughs> Like I have this course behind a paywall. Like you have to pay me, and you can have that information. Like I've never met anybody like that. Um, That's in Drupal. That is in Drupal. <laughs> I know that there are people that have their WordPress communities. You know, you pay a membership to get in or whatnot, and they have you know premium videos and stuff. But if you ever meet them live and in person and ask them you know a specific question, they're going to do the best that they can do to answer that question on the spot, which I think is absolutely amazing. I think that just sets things apart. Um, the communities are another thing, like the people that get behind Genesis or Thesis or Headway, those huge frameworks, how they have, you know, they have their own forums within the WordPress community, I think that is incredible as well, just the, the sense of like, hey, I'm using this and I'm using that and just that camaraderie that you can get from, um, from all using the same type of, you know, framework or plugins or things like that. So communities, another huge thing. Um, the friendships, I think, are huge as well. Like, I know that the WordCamp Dayton was happening like the weekend that my daughter was supposed to be born. Like, uh -huh. yeah, so, somebody <laughs> playing that horribly. No, it, was, it, was, it just worked out perfectly. I was able to be there. But the biggest thing that I was worried about missing, like I was, I wasn't scheduled to speak because I didn't know about my availability and whatnot. But I was going to be super bummed if I couldn't be there because I knew that there were some people coming from out of town that were coming that I wanted to see and hang out with and spend some time with for a few days. There's, so that was kind of one of the big things. Like You make friends at these things and then you go to other ones and you're like, yes, they're going to be here and they're going to be there. Like <laughs> when I was, I'm planning a meetup to go to um, Milwaukee, WordCamp Milwaukee, and I already know like half a dozen people that are going to be there. I'm like, yes, I get to see them, 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 and them. I only get to see them two or three times a year, you know, depending on different events. So I was really excited about that as well. So um, friendships are huge when it comes to the, the WordPress community, the ecosphere. And then um, I don't know if I can actually go for five, um, <laughs> but those are like some of the some of the big ones that I really like about the community and the people that are involved. And I think, too, it makes it makes it pretty simple like WordPress makes it pretty simple for beginners to get involved too like with with developing code or if they find a bug like I know it's it, it sounds difficult like oh put in a track ticket or fix track tickets or stuff but there are actually pages within the within the repository and within you know wordpress.org that you can actually walk through step by step okay here's how to submit a bug here's how to you know do all these different things and they they really encourage people who haven't done a whole lot to get involved and try to, to help make the the stuff that we get to use every day better. Yeah. Oh, and you're absolutely right. Like we agree with you so much, Dustin, <laughs> on that stuff. <laughs> Dayton, Dayton was a great WordCamp, and WordCamps are awesome. And it's one of our favorite things, probably at least for me, about um, things like WP Roundtable, getting to um, hang out with your WordPress buddies more than more often than two times a year. Right. Uh, exactly. But uh, yeah, oh, I just I just love that going to the WordCamps. Um, so we've got a question from uh, our our audience actually, um, and I was gonna just uh, show this one if I can. Um, Jason from the audience says, uh, "I'd like to know at which point Dustin truly felt he'd really become a professional in the world of WordPress." <laughs> Um, you would consider know. yourself a professional. Right, yeah. yeah, I don't know if I'm really truly a quote-unquote professional. Um, I don't know. Like, I think that I kind of 
I don't know. I don't really ever feel like I'm a professional because, again, of course, I look up to the, you know, the Andrew Nasons and the people that are actually leading the development team for the next version of WordPress. I'm like, I am no way, like, anywhere close to capable of what they're doing. But um, I felt like I kind of made it, quote unquote, when I started to see, like, download numbers of my podcast kind of raise just a little bit. Like, you know, the first couple episodes, I got seven people downloaded. I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. Like, I'm talking to seven people. Like, this is so cool. And then, you know, like, the numbers kept getting higher and higher. And it's like, not like I made it, made it, but it's like, you know, people are understanding, like, I'm at least seen by other people as, hey, he knows what he's doing, and he's got some practical advice that can help others with their website. So that's kind of my, just my ultimate goal. I don't think that I ever as I sit back and look at my developer career, I'm like, I was probably the most horrible developer because, like, I hated, like, I love the projects where people could say, like, hey, do this, 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 and this. Like, it was not brainless work, but it's like, I didn't have to come up with, like, oh, you know, do you want your boxes over here? You want them over here? Do you want them, you know, like, what colors? Like, when people told me exactly what they wanted, I could do that all day, every day. But I wasn't, like, the the best developer taking an idea from concept and working with a uh, working with a designer to build like that Photoshop layout and then slice that up and turn it into WordPress theme like that really bored me if you will just because like there was so much detail and there is so long of a project and I just kind of got tired of doing those types of things so that in that manner I wouldn't call myself a WordPress expert in any way or a professional um, but when I, I think when I started actually I'm um, teaching others how to do what I was doing I felt like I kind of "Quote unquote," made it or became like a beginner type developer. <laughs> yeah, I know um, Jason can't be with us today, and I know he is is frustrated by that because he was really looking forward to talking with you because uh, he's talked before about how uh, Dustin Harsler helped him a lot and all the other things that you contributed on your great website. Yeah, uh, he him actually and become a better designer and developer. Yeah, Jason actually took one of my courses. So one of my big things in 2013 was like, I'm going to get away from client work and I'm just going to put together courses. A four week long course where I can teach people everything that I know. I'll record it on video. It'll take, you know, 100 hours. I think I had 100 hours in video work for the first month when I created it. But I'm like, every month after that I run it, there's no work whatsoever. You know, I just have to turn it on and turn it off, turn it on and turn it off. So I was like, this is going to be the best money making scheme ever. Like that was one th that was one thought, but the other thought was I truly want to help people and I want to meet people and hang out with people. And um it was a course, it was a four week long course. I, I varied in prices and it was like, it started, I think the lowest I ever charged was like 500 and it went up as high as 800. And I would have sometimes as, as low as, I think I had, in Jason's class I had two people, there was only two and then three with me every week we got to chat and hang out, which was really cool because I got to know a lot about him, where he lives, you know, what, why he moved away from North America and things like that, which was pretty cool. And, um, but then there was other times that I had 10 people and then I had to have two chats with them during the week. But that was like my main focus for an entire month like hey I'm just going to focus on helping you you know learn about WordPress and we talked everything about how to build plugins and um, custom functionality plugins and how to use like markdown and version control and uh, how to properly enqueue scripts and you know in your themes and how to build a WordPress theme like I did as much as I possibly could I packaged it all up and I was like here it is like this is my absolute best work and then I was like this is going to be this is going to take me into retirement and of course like it didn't and WordPress changed their UI and so like all my videos now are outdated like the the stuff's still good you know the information is still valid but like all the screenshots are of WordPress 3.4 or 3.5 and it's like oh man you know it's a horrible you know like I can't really repurpose it and reuse it very easily so um, I luckily had to let that kind of die as I was running the course of when I started it with automatic and I ended up uh, one last uh, I did one last Black Friday sale right before I started. I started December 2nd, and I did a Black Friday sale where I'm like, here's everything, like 60% off, just here, take the videos, watch them, use them, and then I made like an extra $1,000 right before I started. So that was pretty cool. But um, it turned out like that's when I felt that I kind of made it, if you will, that I was able to take my knowledge and teach it to other people. And they were able to like prove it to me by doing the homework assignments and um, showing that, yes, they could create a child theme and they could you know, do some really cool things. So um, I think that kind of answers your question. If not, it just rambled on about <laughs> how awesome of a WordPress teacher I am. <laughs> I think so. I think so. <laughs> Yeah. Um, thanks. Thanks for that great information, Dustin. And and 
we, all of us that I know, uh, appreciate so much. You know, people like yourself contribute a lot of things, a lot of knowledge, a lot of the know-how, and that, that's really what uh, helps build up the WordPress, the WordPress world that makes this ecosystem really something significant um, because everybody contributes and it just all gives, makes makes it all accessible to to all of us. So. Sure. Um, I couldn't have got where I'm at today without you know people like yourself and and Matt Medeiros and and, uh, and Pippin and, and Chris and, and all those other people who contribute so much. Right. So we know that you have the baby girl and you're obviously busy. What are some of the word games that we're going to be seeing you at uh, within a five hour drive? They know how. Right. Pardon. Right. So. Um, so yeah, I've already spoke. Oh, I didn't speak at um, Dayton because that was here and that was with the baby. But I w appeared at North Canton. Um, so I was I hung out there and that was back in May. I got to meet some. One of the really cool things that I like going to word camps for is I get to meet people who listen to my show. And I had somebody that came up and was like, "Hey, I wasn't sure if I was in the right place, but I recognized your voice, and so I knew that who you were." And like I'm like, "Dude, that is awesome! Like that is so cool!" And you know, you get the funny comments like, "Oh, I didn't know that Dustin was so tall when you meet him in person." Like I'm a tall guy, but like people say that, and so that's that's always fun. Um, WordCamp Columbus is probably going to be on my list. I'm not going to speak there. It's right around the time that my dad's birthday, and I'm not sure if we're traveling that weekend to visit them or the weekend after, so I'm just kind of playing that one by ear. I think WordCamp Grand Rapids is on the same day as another event that I'm going to, so I might not be able to make it there. I don't know. It hasn't been officially released on the WordCamp schedule, but I think I know what weekend it is, and I think I'm already double booked that weekend. And then um, planning on going to WordCamp Milwaukee. That's going to be my first one that I get to fly to, um, which is really kind of cool. Like I've never really flown to one; I've always driven. And um, so that's that one. I got asked to speak at, um, or I was asked to co-speak in Miami, but Miami's WordCamp was on the same day, same weekend as Mother's Day, and I didn't think that was a very good thing to go on my, <laughs> my first Mother's Day. Uh, to go, <laughs> which was the weekend right after North Canton. So like, I think I made a wise choice there. Um, but I'm all, always looking ahead and looking at, like, I pull up that schedule like so many times during the week. Like, oh, I wonder what, oh, okay. My wife even was like, what, what if we went to Florida in October? And I was like, well, let me see. And I look and I was like, oh, well, we're Camp Miami or Tampa is that same weekend. And like, Let's go. And so like, I don't know if we'll go there or not, but I'm like if I can, if, if I can ask to speak, if I can ask to speak and I get accepted to speak and then automatic pays for me to go. And so then it's like, oh, well, at least my plane ticket there and back is covered. And so I'm always open and looking for opportunities. Um, one other place that you may see me around is I'm planning on going to the podcast movement. It is a uh, podcasting event that is held in Dallas, Texas. This is actually the first year. And I think we're going to be wrangling up a happiness bar there. Um, so we're going to have some automaticians just kind of hanging out and answering people's questions. And I, I submitted to speak, and I find out on Wednesday whether or not I was accepted or not. So um, if that's the case, then I get to teach podcasters about WordPress. And so I always try to tie that in. Like, I'm that one guy. You know, they always say find that, that perfect... Um, place for you. Well, I'm that podcasting guy that's an expert at WordPress. There's a lot of WordPress experts out there that try to teach other people how to be experts at WordPress. Like I try to teach the podcasters how to be expert at WordPress because that kind of fits my target. Cool, man. Yeah, that's pretty cool, Dustin. Uh, on the point of WordCamps, um, I know there's a uh, Philly this maybe this coming weekend and Chicago the weekend after, and there's a whole bunch of cool ones coming up. Um, I I, uh, I wonder if you might consider coming to speak in Ann Arbor this year. Uh, we're having our first word camp first weekend of October, and we're not expecting speaker applications, so I expect everybody to apply to. <laughs> speak in October. Yeah. I might be able to do that. That that might work. It depends. Um, yeah, we'd love to have you. The speaker application forms on there. I'm helping organize it, and uh, and I want everybody, even even Nate, perfect. Nate and Kellen should apply as well. Yeah, uh, that's within my that's within my five hour drive window. That's <laughs> <what's closer. laughs> well, you you just committed on air, so now no, no backing out. All right. Um, I was gonna say, Justin, I was gonna say I'm I'm uh, in in a similar boat to yourself. You know, I was really excited about going to WordCamp Grand Rapids for um, the second time, going back this year. But my my wife um, is pregnant. And we're you know due to due to deliver like five days before that or something. So I'm like. Yeah. Kid would be five days old. Do I want to drive across the state and leave them alone? No. Dang it. Probably no. To... No. Oh. Anyways, 
Five days, um, probably not. Five weeks, maybe. Maybe. Questionable. I went um, on an international trip five weeks after my daughter was born. So, uh, Oh, uh, here we that's, go. That's frowned upon. In the, in, in, in the funny part is like my wife loves to travel. And I'm like, I'm going to the beach in April. And she's like, grrr, you know, so yeah. <laughs> I can't go to any other fun meetups for a while until she can come with me. All right, fair enough. <laughs> hey, um, rewinding a, a little bit, I, I have one question I thought of, and this was uh, toward the beginning when you were talking about, you know, the um, the difference, you know, and also the similarities between your automatic job and your website engineer, kind of those two, two mm -hmm. businesses. I was thinking it probably uh, creates a really... Um, good feedback loop too. I would think a lot of the issues that come up um, that you see at Automatic, you know, give you probably a gold mine for like possible topics or things that would be, you know, excellent for the um, the podcast. So I was thinking about kind of a twofold question. The first is, you know, what are um, a lot of the, what are a few, I guess, of the most common, you know, issues that, that come up at, at Automatic that you would consider moving over to your website engineer and, and delving deep more deeply into those. Um, and the second half would be just your website engineer, you know, as a standalone business. Um, what are you seeing coming from your, you know, kind of your user base there? What do they most want to learn about? And what can we expect to see uh, in the near future? Sure. So I, I do get a lot of inspiration, and sometimes, like, when I'm not planning properly like so sometimes like I'll sit down to record a podcast I'm like what am I going to talk about and a lot of times when I was developing it was super easy because I'm like I will talk about something that happened to me during the course of the week like oh a client got locked out of their site like they were using this plugin this is why it's good you know like or yeah. somebody you know completely de deleted their entire website luckily I had a backup I was able to restore it like those are the good things that I was able to talk about um, one of the big ones that I, I cover because I got the question over and over and over again was all about like domain names and I wanted to really emphasize like if you let a domain expire and somebody else, you know, it goes to like you have a few days, I think it's like 12 or 18 days that you have to actually renew it before it actually goes on, goes into a redemption process and with the redemption process then it's an $80 fee and then you have like 60 days to redeem it from that but in that period it can act actually go to a GoDaddy like um, expired auction domain and somebody else can buy the domain and they can point it to whatever they want so you may have a million followers to your website name.com but if you don't let it, if you don't renew it in time, somebody else can buy it and they can point it to whatever they want. And we've seen so many times like people lose their domain and then it's pointed to like a porn site or it's pointed to like, you know, you know, some like spammy something or other. And it's just horrible. So like that was like one of the fuels for one of my shows. Like, hey, make sure that you know this. Or, you know, sometimes then I got to, once I really got into automatic and I saw the difference between WordPress.org and WordPress.com, I was able to really kind of dive in and, okay, here's the difference. And here's what you may want to consider if you want to, you know, if you want a simple site, maybe WordPress.com is your option if you don't need to do a fully customized site. Um, but WordPress.org gives you all the plugins and all that kind of stuff. So that led to, you know, some more information when it comes to um, show topics. So I'm always on the lookout for show topics. And I really get a lot of feedback from people who are on my email list. You know, like every once in a while I'll say, hey, you know, like a few, I would say a few months ago I sent out a survey and just asked, like, I wanted feedback on the show, like how was I doing, you know, what pieces of the show would you like to me see, like do you want me to get rid of the news section or you want me to get rid of, you know, like interviews with people, like I was just asking just to find out and yeah. you know, most people didn't want me to like lose stuff but they're always like, they always wanted, it seemed like a lot more advanced type stuff. Um, they always wanted to, you know, and of course, advanced SEO was stuff that they always wanted. Advanced, like how to do custom post types. Advanced, like how do you, um, how do you create a development site and then push it live and all these different things. Like those were things that people really wanted to know. And so it's like, okay, so I just try to filter those out. And like some weeks try to go easy or more basic, and then other weeks try to go with a little bit more like oomph. Like okay, this is going to be a more power user type thing, but it's good information overall to at least wrap your head around. I find a lot of the beginners that listen are they're like oh I have no idea what you're talking about but it kind of made sense and I at least know like the questions to ask when I'm trying to hire somebody or at least can at least wrap my head around what you were talking about even though I have no idea what technically you were you were saying or how to do what you were talking about so um, yeah so yeah all right Dustin we're just about we're just about done here so um, we got we got all these other questions we wanted to ask so I think we're gonna have to do kind of a lightning round Okay. Uh, like rapid questions, kind of like Matt does. Okay. Here with, uh, I'll keep my answer short. Short answer, and I'll and I'll, I'll give you a short question. 
Uh, I'll try not to give you the open-ended ones. All right. If you didn't work at Automatic, you would be blank. If I didn't work at Automatic, I would still be a WordPress freelance developer myself. Awesome. Uh, what is an example of maybe a couple of plugins you can't live without? Um, the big ones that I can't live without, I use the iTheme security on every install. That's a big one for me. Um, right now, I've just I've just installed MailPoet, and this is a whole other podcast episode that's coming out, but MailPoet now controls my entire email list. I'll explain more about that, or that's just kind of a teaser. Go, go over to your website, engineer.com, and check that out. should be this week's episode, so that's what I'm going to talk about. That's going to be good. What's one quick piece of advice you have for anybody starting a WordPress-based business? If you're starting a WordPress-based business, never use the word WordPress when you're telling your clients that you're going to build them a website. <laughs> um, no, I agree. I agree. Tell them, tell them that they'll be able to make any adjustments, and you can teach them how to, to make adjustments, or that they could pay you, you know, a small fee to keep things updated or things like that. But they don't care if it's WordPress, and if you build a custom login page, they'll never even know. That's funny. That's funny. It's funny that an automatician tells us that. That's a piece of advice. So. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so, okay. Um, what is uh, your favorite resource for WordPress beginners? Is it wrong to say your website engineer.com? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would also check out like uh, um, WP101 and WP Beginner. Those are two great. Um, yeah, definitely. What's sorry. your favorite resource for WordPress developers? Um, developers, you'd have to check out uh, Pippin Williamson's Pippin's plugins .com. Another uh, developer that I like to follow is Chris Lemma. Um, check him out; he has a lot of like business advice as well. So, who should we interview next on WP Roundtable? Um, have you interviewed Matt from the Matt, Matt. Report? No. Or well, Matt, or Matt Mullenweg. Welcome and introduction. Matt, uh, there's a lot of Matts that are out there. <laughs> But Matt Medeiros, I think, would be a, he would be excellent for this type of group. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah thank you. Any, I can help any, hook you up. Any well, he all, actually tweeted to us, so we might be able to get him on now. Gotcha. Nice. I was going to say, any and all Matt M's are your suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> Matt M, can't go wrong. Matt M is a yes. <laughs> Across the board. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So you'll, we'll expect you to introduce us, and uh, uh, that would be great. You can do that. <laughs> All right. Um, well, everybody, thanks uh, for everybody who was watching, for shop, stopping in for WP Roundtable. I want to thank Dustin so much for being on here with us today. Uh, really, really appreciate your time. And uh, that's about it for today. So thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, thanks, thanks Dustin. Right. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Dustin. Good to see you again. Good to talk with you.